Hello there and welcome to the last section of the quarter. This is section 13.1 on lines, planes, and surfaces in R3. And in this intro video, we're going to derive some equations to describe planes in R3. And so to start, let's first ask what really defines a plane in three-dimensional space. Well, the first thing we need to determine is the orientation of the plane relative to the coordinate axes. And the way we determine that orientation is through what's called a normal vector. Okay, so this is a vector that is orthogonal to our plane. Let me jump over here real quick to spell out in more detail what I'm saying. So if I just specify this vector right here and I say, all right, our plane is orthogonal to this vector. Well, that on its own actually doesn't uniquely identify the plane we're describing, right? It actually identifies an entire family of planes, all of which are orthogonal to this vector. However, if I specify a normal vector and a point on the plane, then that singles out which plane in this family I'm describing, and in turn, uniquely identifies the plane. Okay, so these two ingredients, a normal vector of the plane, which I'm going to call n and label its components a, b, and c, and a known point on the plane, I'm going to call that point p0 and label its coordinates x0, y0, z0, these two ingredients uniquely identify a plane in R3. Okay, now next step I'm going to go ahead and call the position vector for the point p0 the vector r0, and so this is the vector that has its tail at the origin and its tip at the point p0, and so its components are x0, y0, z0. And now let's go ahead and let the point p be any other point on the plane, and I'm going to label its coordinates x, y, and z, and then we have the position vector for the point p, I'll call that vector r, and its components then are x, y, and z. So now what I'd like to do is relate this point p to these two known quantities, p0 and n. And the key observation there is, is as follows. Okay, So since these two position vectors, r0 and r, have their tips in the plane, this difference vector, r minus r0, is then parallel to our plane. And if it's parallel to our plane, then in particular that implies that it is orthogonal to the normal vector n. And so if I take the dot product of n in this difference vector r minus r0, I will get 0. Okay, So a point p is in our plane if and only if this difference vector r minus r0 is orthogonal to the normal vector n, which is true if and only if this dot product is 0. Okay, So this defining equation describes all points p in our plane. And we call this the vector equation for the plane. All right, so now if we expand this using components, well, as we noted up here, n in component form is abc. And then for r minus r0, just subtract component-wise, and that gives you x minus x0, comma y minus y0, comma z minus z zero. Okay, so this dot product here is equal to zero. That's really just a restatement of our vector equation. And now go ahead and expand this dot product on the left-hand side, and you get a times the quantity x minus x zero plus b times the quantity y minus y zero plus c times the quantity z minus z zero, and that is equal to zero. Okay, and now notice here, these are all scalar quantities in this equation. So for that reason, we call this a scalar equation for this plane. All right, so now let's go ahead and see this in action. We'll look at an example here. It says, find an equation for the plane that passes through the point P0 with coordinates negative 1, 5, 0, and is orthogonal to the vector n with components 2, negative 1, 4. Okay, well, we can go just directly off of what we derived below here. So our a, b, c, right, those are the components of our normal vector, so that's 2, negative 1, and 4. So notice in the scalar equation, those are the coefficients of these quantities here in parentheses, right? So we have 2 times the quantity, then x minus x0. Well, our x0, that's the 
x coordinate of our known point p0, so that's negative 1, so x minus negative 1, and then we have our b is negative 1, so that's minus quantity y minus y0, so that's y minus 5, plus c, so that'd be 4 times the quantity z minus z0, which is 0, and then I can go ahead and just clean that up a little bit. So I get 2 times the quantity x plus 1 minus the quantity y minus 5 plus 4z is equal to 0. So, okay, so this is a scalar equation for the plane described above. Now, I can also multiply this out and combine, and I'm going to move the constant term over to the right-hand side, so I get this scalar equation, 2x minus y plus 4z is equal to negative 7. Okay, so both answers are acceptable, right, and they describe the plane. All right, great. So now here's another example. It says find a normal vector for the plane negative 2x plus 5y minus z is equal to 11 and a point on this plane. All right, well, for a normal vector, as we see here, right, in our scalar equation derived below, a, b, c, which are the components of the normal vector, these are these coefficients of x, y, and z. So notice in the above example, right, in this equation and in this equation, 2, negative 1, 4, which are the components for a normal vector, show up as the coefficients of x, y, and z. So if I'm given the equation of a plane to extract a normal vector, I just simply read off the coefficients of x, y, and z. So the, uh, here, negative 2 is the coefficient of x, so that's the i component of our normal vector, and then 5, that's the j component, and k, that's going to be uh, negative 1 there. Okay, so negative 2, 5, negative 1 is our normal vector, and then for a point on the plane, well there I just need any x, y, z triple that will make this equation true. Okay, now of course there's an infinite number of points on the plane, right? There's an infinite number of x, y, z triples that will make this equation true. So if I want, right, to generate one point uh, without doing too much work, I'm going to go ahead and just set x and y both to 0, and then I get negative z is equal to 11, so z then would have to be negative 11. So here's a point on the plane, okay, but I of course could set y and z to both, to both be 0, and that would give me what, negative 11 halves comma 0 comma 0. Uh, I could set x and z both to 0, y then would be 11 fifths, okay, so on and so forth, right, these are just a couple points on the plane, but in any event, this is a good place to pause, and we'll pick up with more of this in the next video. All right, thank you so much.